I didn't read the riot bill. I read the lawsuit that was filed against DeSantis uh, in anticipation of protests that were coming up that were you know, alleged to be now at risk because of an unconstitutional riot bill. DeSantis's riot bill, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, I, I've read the reviews on it and I've read some of the provisions as alleged in the lawsuit, but basically um, it wants to create certain affirmative defenses. It wants to enhance certain, uh, um, what's the word, penalties or, or sanctions for certain violations. Um, specifically, I, I think it wanted to create an affirmative defense if a motorist ha- feels threatened and has to drive through protesters, um, that that will be a valid defense, uh, you know, saving evidence to the contrary. Certain crimes, if committed in the context of a riot, become more serious and, and more sanctionable. I mean, do you want to give an, a broader or more specific overview or do, or is that good? Yeah, enough? I mean, I mean, the simple answer is that they want to d- discourage, deter, and better disincentivize protests from con- turning into riots. And the way they want to do so is no more blocking highways, no more blocking pedestrian pathways, uh, no more blocking traffic in general, no more using violence of any kind uh, as part of it, no more assaulting people, no more putting people in fear of assault. Uh, All of those tactics, they want to criminalize, they want to enhance this punishments for, create clarity that there's punishments for them, and expand what criminal sanctions are available and what civil remedies are available. And it's it, the whole goal is to basically deter these criminal tactics that are converting protest into riots. And in my view, the lawsuit is basically saying we we think we have a right to riot. I mean, they put it in different ways, but that's what it boils down to. They don't want to have these limits because a lot of their objection, they're saying, well, there's nothing in here that requires imminent violence. I read the law. Yes, it does. So it, it, uh, it can punish you for violent actions afterwards that don't require imminent violence at that point. But it, but again, all of it is it, they track the law to track the, the 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 legislation to track Supreme Court precedent, and so it uh, and federal analogous law. So it, it, what is they're just realizing that they've got to stop these people from taking over highways, taking over bridges, taking over roads. No mas. It's an automatic felony if you do it. Okay. Now, now here's the question. One of the provisions that was in the law is that uh, depending on what you're arrested for, you're going to remain in jail until your first bail hearing. Correct. But th- that's true all, always anyway. Well, right. that's, you know, that's the thing. Now, reading it, I mean, I, and I don't have any specific expertise on Florida law, but reading it, uh, it does sound like there are already existing laws to deal with all of these things, blocking a highway, uh, in, in, in encircling a car. There are already defense laws or defenses that exist if you're under threat and you have to resort to exerting physical force, you'll be justified. Anyhow, you just won't have an affirmative defense from what I understood versus having the defense itself. But my initial reflex is in reading it. On the one hand, there's already a ton of laws that already cover this, if not all of it, save and except for um, increased penalties for certain types of infractions. And the second thing, keeping people in jail until their first bail hearing uh, for whenever that can occur. These are issues that we had raised with some of the apparent injustices going on from the January 6 riots in that they were going with a with a full sledgehammer locking people up keeping them locked away imposing excessive bail conditions and it just sounds like one could argue that what DeSantis is doing in Florida is exactly what they were trying to do and did in fact do with the January 6 rioters and you know it becomes a question of whether or not it's it's abusive and excessive especially since you in theory already have laws to govern these very same concerns that you already have well, two things with it. One is uh, all it does is say that you can't catch and release on location. You have to take them in for a bail hearing because the way that law works, that already is constitutionally conforming. You have to get a bail hearing within 24 to 48 hours under the Constitution. So all that's really doing is saying no more letting them go on location. And there was no giving them tickets, no giving them citations, no giving them summonses. Make sure to jail them through the process. Their main goal there is to break up a riot and, you know, get 24, 48 hours of control. Uh, so that that's all that effectively does. They were calling it cruel and unusual punishment. That's not going to get anywhere because that well, you, your the right to bail is still protected under 24 to 48 hours. And the law does nothing to change that at all. So the, uh, then they're not going to win the idea that y- you shouldn't be arrested on site. Um, the, and then the otherwise, what they really did is they, they took existing law and just simplified it, streamlined it in one location. 
So they're basically creating something that's an easy guidepost for judges and eat for cops uh, to be able to issue the arrest without saying, well, it's this statute over here or it's this one over here or it's this one over there. It's saying, OK, it's all right here. If this become a riot, here's all the, the things that are crimes. Here's all the sentences. Here's how you do it. Uh, that's all it's mostly done. That's why, like, when I first looked at the suit, I thought, well, maybe they had a real vague definition. And I was like, no, or, or a constitutionally well, yep. dubious one. And it really well, wasn't maybe, that. But may maybe, I mean, I think some of the threshold of the numbers for what qualified as a riot was three or more people gathering. I mean, that, that. Yeah, but that, that, that's not, pro because, but it's three or more that are going to do violence and that are doing violence. So it still requires, and that they have an intent to do so. They have intent to do violence, intent to be disorderly, that's pretty much what most riot laws on the books already are. So, I mean, all yeah, they've yeah. done is streamlined it. Uh, well, most well, of these well, laws already exist someplace. Well, so that's one issue. Is that if the laws already exist, I, I'm always concerned in adding new laws when you already have existing laws. It's the exact same argument for, you know, increased gun laws when you already have effectively, you know, all the laws that people complain about not being in place seem to be in place. Let's put more on that. Just, you know, more laws, less justice. Um, I was concerned in the number of what qualifies as a riot because three, I mean, three is a bar fight becomes a riot. And in which case, you know, there's still, still sanctions for a bar fight. So why do you even need it in the first place? I get increasing the penalties for certain types of infractions. And that is just to say, these are, these are aggravating factors, much like uh, hate crime motivation is an aggravating factor for sentencing of, of, of an, what would otherwise be an ordinary crime. So I can get certain parts. It just did seem like it was somewhat overly broad and reduce the number of what would qualify as qualifying as a riot to the point where it's nice that DeSantis wants this now and everybody, people have faith in DeSantis to apply laws properly, but it might not always be a Republican, uh, uh, I'm just gonna forget his word. Well, uh, uh, DeSantis is a governor, I, I'm, I'm blanking, right? Oh yeah, I mean, all but, of these things are, they, while well, they were already criminalized in some capacity, it's mostly streamlining and specified really to deal with Antifa in particular. So the the way in which Antifa the, the black block tactics it's 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 targeted them. So they already had laws to deal with this in part, but the problem was they were in different places to try to deal with different things from the past. So that's what they mostly did is just put it all together in one streamlined location. And so the and and that's uh it's likely effect if they had had a broader if they had said a riot is three people together, and it was more nebulous. But they said it's three people, and the three people agree on committing violent disorderly conduct that's vi defined as criminal in the law. Well, that's, that, that's basically Brandenburg. So, I mean, the, that, that's been established for forever in some capacity. So the, uh, that's why I thought it was a, a suit. What was interesting to me was just, was just the filing of the suit suggested, uh, I think it's like lawyers matter. Some, some crap yeah. like that is an, it was an, activist. it was an activist group and a fictional plaintiff, which I didn't understand how you go with a fictional plaintiff, but yeah, um, but it, it showed what some had been skeptical of, which is the belief that there's a deliberate attempt to convert these protests into riots. That's right. how I read it. It was an attempt to sue to say, yeah, we're, we're entitled to this, but we're going to keep doing it, and you shouldn't be allowed to try to stop it or criminalize it, punish it, or penalize it. And even, and that right now there's enough of a hodgepodge of laws that they can get around, uh, get around in one way, shape, or form and not having clarity of direction and police. Because, I mean, they've been doing this blocking highways now for years. Yeah, and there's I, almost never arrest. But see, but that that might just be the political aspect of it, and not the and not the legal aspect. Um, and just unknown sailor, and I'm going to remember another chat was Viva, Viva. The bail hearing thing is a direct result of what Portland DA is doing with Antifa, releasing and not charging Antifa rioters caught and arrested. And someone else said, you know, there should have been a provision for Kamala Harris not raising money to bail out people. But what they were doing in Portland, uh, you know, catch and release the same evening. Is that, uh, it's a stupid question, is that already uh, against policy or is that already illegal or is that allowed? There's no, yeah, there's no law that prohibits that right now in Florida. So, I mean, that right now that's up to the local government and they're just taking away that power and saying you can't do that. Saying you have to arrest them and you have to charge them and they can't be released until their bail hearing. And if you're going to dismiss the charges, you have to do it at the bail hearing. So it, it, it's mostly to buy time. And again, like most of this law is designed to, Antifa creates this problem, what law solves it? And they found a law that may have already solved it, but they put it into one streamlined location. And in some cases, clarified the law where it was ambiguous. I'm going to read this one because I'm also going to say something. Mike Lindsay says, don't rip on Vosh or anybody. You don't have to agree with them, but don't throw shade. Vosh engages conservatives on a regular basis. No, and I know what people specifically disagree with Vosh on. And having heard some of the clips, 
I specifically disagree with Vosh on this also. And it goes back to the truth in jest or it's just a joke defense and some things that Vosh has said as a joke and maybe sometimes not as a joke regarding certain behaviors and certain whatevers. Um, I've, I've never watched uh, Vosh. Right? I, I, watched, I watched Vosh's debate with, um, with Count Dankula as my homework before doing the uh, stream with Count Dank. And, you know, I would, I would think that a lot of the arguments being raised by Vosh uh, would not, if they're to hold true of Count Dank, would hold true of Vosh as well, in which case he might be guilty by his own arguments. But that's a discussion for another day, people. Uh, but I, like I say, anyhow, you disagree with someone, do it civilly, but we're all big boys and we know what the internet's about. And the internet's about sometimes throwing shade, sometimes throwing the most eg egregious insults you can think of just because internet's beautiful sometimes. Um, okay, so what ended up happening? Did they get a hearing date on that lawsuit? Because it was presentable... Uh, on an urgent, on an emergency injunctive basis, because they had a protest, I think, scheduled for yesterday. Did did a judge hear it, and was there any ruling? Uh, to my knowledge, there's no judicial ruling, so I don't know if they actually held the hearing or not. But I didn't hear about any ruling. Okay, man, neither did I. I was looking, but I am behind an iron curtain here, literally. So, <laughs> Tom Villa says, "Congrats on a thousand for a thousand viewer on Rumble. Amazing how much." Amazing how much better you both sound on a free speech channel. 